Let me tell you something. Call of Duty Zombies is one of those game modes that truly is a one-of-a-kind experience. Introduced in 2008, this famous survival experience is one that many have had the privilege to enjoy, and has even gotten to witness a very active competitive scene since as far back as its inception. Despite its simple premise, that being, survive to the highest round, if you've ever had the chance to try out this game mode, you'll know that it can actually be one of the most difficult things to try and get good at, and usually takes multiple years of practice just to become a world record contender. What? I just fell through the fucking map. Over the years, Zombies has seen many different iterations of itself across numerous different games, and today's story will be taking place on Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and more specifically, on a map known as Nocturne Toten. Today I want to bring you through the journey of how I not only managed to beat a Zombies world record, but how I managed to completely destroy it, and how I managed to not only achieve one world record, but three world records in a single weekend. This is the story of how I achieved a world record on Black Ops 3, Nocturne and Toten. First and foremost, let's start this off by covering what kinds of world records exist in Zombies. In Black Ops 3 specifically, there are 14 unique Zombies maps that each share a similar set of world records players try and compete for. For example, one of the most popular categories is known as High Rounds, which as the name implies, is when the player's objective is to try and survive to the highest round they can, so long as it isn't through the use of any glitches or exploits. High Round playthroughs contain some of the most optimized and most impressive world records in all of zombies, and often utilize very unique strategies that can sometimes take hundreds of hours to completely master. The other most popular categories are the speedruns, where players can either choose to speedrun to a certain round, speedrun completing an easter egg, or even down to things as simple as upgrading their weapon. And this is where things start to get really interesting. These categories in particular require a deep understanding of both the game's movement and also how to utilize it to its maximum efficiency, heavily relying on quick thinking skills and even a fair bit of good luck on top of that, all coming together to create some of the most impressive and stylish speedruns of any game. But there's actually another subset of world records that are a little bit different from the rest, and these are known as the challenge records. You see, challenge records provide very specific limitations the player must follow throughout their game. These include reaching the highest round with no power, reaching the highest round in only the starting room, or even reaching the highest round without any perks. Today, we'll be mainly focusing on the no perks category in particular, which strictly forbids the player from purchasing any perks for the full duration of the match. For those unfamiliar, Perca-Colas, also referred to as perks, are drinkable upgrades the player can buy which will grant them a certain stat bonus for a specific part of their game. For example, the perk Juggernog increases the player's health, allowing them to survive up to 5 hits instead of 3, while the perk Quick Revive allows a solo player to get back up when taking it down. But in the no perks category, you obviously aren't allowed to buy any of these at all, and instead have to try and survive with as very little resources as possible. But before we get much further, there's one more thing I need to mention, and that's a mechanic known as Gobblegums. Gobblegums were a feature that we first got to see in Black Ops 3, and they behave in a very similar way to perks, where by consuming them, the player will acquire a very specific bonus that would otherwise be impossible to attain. For example, the Gobblegum known as Raindrops is easily one of the best in the game, because as soon as the player uses this, the game will immediately grant them one of every single drop. And the reason I bring this up is because all Gobblegums in Black Ops 3 are separated into two categories, Megas and Classics. Raindrops in particular is what we would refer to as a Mega Gobblegum, because the only way you can normally obtain these is through spending Liquid Divinium in Dr. Monty's Factory, a currency that is slowly earned from gaining XP. Classic Gobblegums, on the other hand, are strictly earned from leveling up, and the abilities that they grant you aren't nearly to the same magnitude as Megas. The reason this is important is because every leaderboard in Black Ops 3 Zombies has since been divided between the two types of Gobblegums, and the category I chose to play on for today's video was Megas, because it allowed me to utilize certain benefits that will prove to be important later in the video. But with that said, let's dive into today's story. 
The day was February 29th, 2024, and I'd gotten to stay home from work that morning due to it being a slow day. While on paper, this may not sound all that great, the timing for this couldn't have been better, because I'd actually been planning on investing the entirety of that weekend grinding for a world record on Black Ops 3. Just a week prior, I had found myself scrolling through a website called Zombies World Records, checking out a bunch of world records across every Zombies game, and I eventually came across the challenge categories I had mentioned a few minutes ago. And after doing a bit of research, I noticed something really peculiar. Most, if not all of the world records in the No Perks category had become pretty well optimized, but not in the case of one specific map, Nocturne Toten. Nox's world record was only a round 81 achieved by Skirty, and while this record is still undoubtedly impressive, this round number paled in comparison to some of the other competition. I went ahead and watched his run to hopefully get some insight into what strategy he had chosen to use, and in his game, he followed a few simple steps. He first would make sure to only open the first door of the map in order to help control the spawns, and he then would camp in the mystery box room for quite some time, strictly relying on the weapons he had obtained from the mystery box until round 40. From here, he would then switch to his high round strategy of training the zombies in a figure 8 motion around a few pillars, using a weapon known as the thunder gun to protect himself and the cuda to consistently get the kills. The thunder gun is a very unique weapon that can only be obtained from the mystery box, and allows the player to blast the zombies in a massive shockwave at the press of a button, killing them instantly on any round. And this weapon would act as his safeguard for escaping any tricky situations. His other weapon, the Cuda, is one that can actually be purchased off of the wall. And the reason he uses this is because he's able to buy ammo for it at any time, helping ensure that ammo doesn't become a concern later in the match. To make this weapon useful, he uses a combination of two gobble gums, Great Power, which allows the player to upgrade the next weapon they get from the mystery box, and Bullet it boost, a gobble gum that gives an upgraded weapon a second upgrade in the form of an alternate ammo type. To keep a long story short, AATs are what allows a player to kill a zombie with any weapon on any round, because each of the different ammo types all deal infinite damage, and the AAT he chose to use for his run was Turn, which for a brief period of time will turn a zombie from an enemy into an ally that will then kill other zombies for 20 seconds, eventually needing to be reapplied once the ally dies out. He continued doing his high round strategy for the rest of his five and a half hour game, training the zombies and killing them with his turn, until he unfortunately lost his game on round 81. If it wasn't obvious enough already, no perks as a category is easily one of the most unforgivable, because if you get hit three times in quick succession, your match will be over, with no chance of trying again. So playing both safely and efficiently is an extremely important balance to try and create. Now this is the part where I come in. I knew after watching his run that this world record, while still very impressive, was still beatable by a long shot, and I knew that morning that I wanted to try to beat this with a world record of my own. So, I booted up my game and started practicing. My first attempt started off pretty smoothly, as I had gotten both of my weapons pretty early on, but I unfortunately lost the game on round 25 due to not checking my back. A pretty simple mistake, all things considered. So, feeling undeterred, I went back and immediately started another run, and this attempt was already looking much better. Before I knew it, I had already reached round 30, and soon after that I made it to 40, and even made my way up to round 50. I was playing this game pretty well, and had finally started to get a good rhythm of the high round strategy. But, on round 51, this happened. Dude, what the f was that? Are you kidding me? By trying to avoid shooting my thunder gun to save ammo, I tried to just barely squeeze past a group of zombies, but unfortunately I just didn't make it due to missing my slide, costing me my entire game. At this point, I was starting to feel the heat, because I had already spent over two hours on this one single game only to lose it all over one minor mistake. But I knew that this was just a part of getting the world record, so I kept my hopes high going into the next game. The next game started and I quickly found myself at round 50 once again, and this time I had tried playing a bit more carefully, which was proving to be really successful. By the time I reached round 55, I was nearly two and a half hours in, and was feeling pretty good about this game. But then, once again, disaster struck. When I had a death machine power up, I was standing in the doorway to try and kill the zombies as fast as I could, hoping to maximize the amount of utility I could get out of this drop. But somehow, one zombie had managed to slip right past my field of vision. And then, this happened. 
Wait, what? Where did he even come from? What the fuck? This ending in particular was extremely frustrating, because all it would have taken was just one more bullet of my death machine to save the run, but I just wasn't fast enough. After this ending, though, I decided the best course of action was to at least take a bit of a break. I didn't know if I was going to try any more runs that day, since I had already spent a few hours on attempts, but at that moment, I decided it was best to step away. I did end up coming back an hour later, though, with a really good feeling about this next game. I decided I wanted to give it just one last try before it got too late, and so I got right back to doing another run. And let's just say, this match was insane. In due time, I had made it back to round 55, and this time, I was not going to let it slip. I played as carefully and meticulously as I could, making sure that each and every movement was done with the utmost awareness. And just before hitting the 3 hour mark, I had already made it up to round 60, a new personal best. And just before the 4.5 hour mark, I had made it to round 70, just 11 rounds away from the world record. I continued to play carefully, and put all my attention into this run, because if I lost it, I was for sure going to have to call it a day. By the 5 hour mark, I had already reached round 75, then round 76, 77, 78, and 79. By the time 6 hours had passed, I was now on round 80, just one round away from tying the world record. Normally at this point, you'd expect to hear that a lot of nerves had started to settle in, but I wasn't feeling nervous at all, and tried my best to remain as focused as I could. And finally, just 13 minutes later, I finished the round. I was now tied with the world record, but this wasn't my cue to stop. I then played for a few more minutes, and finally, 6 hours and 26 minutes after I had started, I achieved the world record. Now some players may have stopped playing at this point, because this run was already turning into an entire day, but stopping was the last thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to not only beat this world record, I wanted to destroy it, and so that's exactly what I did. Rounds had felt like they were flying by at this point, and I was feeling super locked in the entire time. Before I knew it, I had hit round 90, then 92, 95, all the way up to round 100, officially being the first of the Megas category to reach the triple digits, at least with no perks. I eventually went to bed that night and woke up the next morning to continue playing, and managed to squeeze out 11 more rounds of this impressive game, finally ending my run at round 111. This was an amazing record, and I felt incredibly happy knowing that I had just achieved a new world record by over 30 rounds. And who knows, maybe I'll come back one day and try to beat it once again. But this quickly went down as one of my favorite accomplishments in gaming. But you want to know what's crazy about this? This isn't where the story ends. In fact, me achieving this world record was only just the beginning. You see, just getting one world record for this video didn't make the story feel complete. I still wanted there to be a bit more substance. And what better way to do that than by achieving yet another world record? This time though, I wanted to add a bit of a twist. I wasn't going to play this run by myself again, no. Instead, I was going to set this world record in co-op, and more specifically, with a pretty close friend of mine named Mixtra. Now Mixtra and I had actually played quite a bit of zombies together in the past, but prior to this, we had never actually tried going for any world records. However, we knew that we both had the skills and the chemistry to make it happen, and so, we decided to give it our best shot. For simplicity's sake, I decided we'd keep our attention towards Noct, just so everything could remain familiar and I wouldn't have to explain a whole other map. And by some coincidence, we saw a ton of potential in improving the No Perks record, which kept the premises the same. And so, on the morning of March 2nd, we got in a Discord call and started grinding. Going into our first game that morning, we had a relatively simple strategy in mind. We would first acquire upgraded guns from the wall in the mystery box and made sure to bullet boost them as well. Mixtra's goal was to get turned on his shotgun and deadwire for his CUDA, while I would carry the thunder gun and also have a CUDA with deadwire on it as well. Our early round strategy was relatively the same as the solo record where we would camp in the same room and strictly rely on weapons from the box, while our late game strategy was actually a little bit different. The way we set it up was that each of us would take one side of the box room and would use our upgraded weapons to control the map. 
keeping the first door of the map closed in order to give us the full space of the box room to run around with. And the reason we chose this strategy in particular was because we knew it was a relatively safe way to play. The world record we were up against was around 82 that two players had achieved in the summer of 2022, and we were up for the challenge of beating this impressive run. The world record game had taken them over 12 hours to reach, and we knew going into this that it would take us an entire day. But that factor on its own wasn't enough to deter us from trying to beat it. Going into our first match, things had started off pretty well. While we didn't have the best box luck, we were at least able to get set up by round 30, and we continued to play quickly through the 30s with pretty much no issues. Well, at least until this happened. Oh, I threw a monkey. Oh, that might be GG. Oh my god. Oh, we died. <laughs> When trying to spin for our gobblegums that round, we had stayed in the upstairs area for a little bit too long, and unfortunately, we weren't able to make it out of this situation alive, ultimately ending our game on round 34. This loss in particular made me feel extremely dissatisfied, as such a ridiculous ending can be really hard to bounce back from, but we wanted to at least give it one more try, as we knew that we could still make this world record happen, and so, we got back to another run, and this time, things weren't just looking better, we were playing some of the greatest zombies I had ever seen. You're a beast, thank you. Gotta get those 360 revives. Yeah. Before we knew it, we were right back to where we were, and we're both feeling more confident than ever. With me having the thunder gun and him having a large area to keep zombies locked in at, things were going very smoothly. We quickly made our way up from 35, to 40, to 45, to 50, then even up to round 60 a few hours later. By this point, there were so many zombies in just one single round that it would take us upwards of 10 to 15 minutes just to move up a single time, but this didn't deter us from moving forward. We continued grinding for hours across the entire day, mercilessly killing thousands of zombies as fast as we could, and after nearly 11 hours of playing, we had finally made it up to round 80. We were now just two rounds away from tying the world record, and at this point, I was starting to feel extremely fatigued. You see, we played this match just one day after I had played the 15 hour long game, so I was feeling extremely exhausted from playing so much zombies. But now that we were this far in, I knew I had to keep pushing through it, and a little less than an hour after hitting round 80, we finally made it to round 82. We had officially tied the world record, and now it was up to us to survive just one last round to take the record. All of my energy was locked into this moment, because I didn't want to miss out on this opportunity, and Mixtra was feeling much of the same all throughout. This round was going to feel like it would last a century since the stakes were so high. But finally, after 22 minutes, we were down to the final group of zombies of the round. But then, something unbelievable happened. Oh, what? Dom? Yeah, yeah? Hello? What, what, what just happened? I don't know, are you good? No, my game froze. Oh, sh dude. No! Wait, wait, wait. No fucking way. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, it, it's okay. It's okay. I can finish the round. At the very end of round 82, with only around 60 zombies left, Mixtra had disconnected from our game, and this understandably sent us into an absolute panic, as we had no idea what to do from here. Was this going to invalidate our run? Was all of this time we had spent on this match going to be for nothing? There was only one way we could find out, so we sent a message in the Zombie World Records server describing our situation, and one of the support team members quickly got back to us and said that as long as Mixtra could join back, we could finish the round and still achieve our world record. And thankfully, by the absolute skin of our teeth, he had managed to join back. And since there weren't many zombies left, I just had to finish the round to get us our world record. And a few minutes later, it finally happened. Dude, this is it. Yes, sir. Let's go, dude. Holy, we got it. Excuse me. <laughs> dude, oh my gosh. I can't oh, believe it, shit. dude. That That's insane that you literally disconnected, but it, oh my gosh. But we just had to finish the round. 
After over 12 hours spent in this one single match, we had done it. By just one single round, we had achieved a new world record in both the No Perks and the No Jug category of Nocturne Toten, meaning that we got two world records in a single game. The relief we felt knowing that we had just barely managed to pull through at the last minute was insane, and our efforts were rewarded with a new world record. We were both feeling great about this run, and at this point, we had just ended the game to finally be able to call it a day, because Mixture wouldn't be able to reasonably get any of his guns back anyways if we had continued playing. But you want to know what's crazy about all of this? There's actually another detail about this record that I haven't mentioned yet. You remember that round 82 game we were competing against? Well, that record wasn't just played by anybody, it was played by me, and we had just beaten my previous world record I had achieved in the summer of 2022. And this felt amazing. Not only had I achieved a solo world record that weekend, but I had gotten the co-op world record as well, and for the second time. In all of my time playing zombies, I had never dreamed of even just getting one world record, no less getting three of them within the same weekend. And the fact that it happened in the way it did is still absolutely mind-blowing to me and is still something I look back on with the utmost amount of shock. Now, to be completely fair, all of these world records are not fully optimized, and could easily be beaten sometime in the near future if anyone wants to try. But honestly, holding these world records for a long period of time isn't what I'm most concerned about. It was the dedication and perseverance that I'd gone into setting these records that really made them count at the end of the day, and also the fact that it gave my friend and I a really cool story to share. And so, no matter what happens, I'll still be happy. So does this mark the end of my zombies journey? Absolutely not. I'm still really excited to see what kinds of world records I could possibly achieve in the future, and will continue to play off and on like I always have until I can make it happen. But I guess until I have another cool story to share, I'll just have to keep grinding. So thanks for watching, and take care.